Have I stumbled across the ultimate beta by Citizen? No, but I think a viewer might have done. They sent me the details of this watch and where to pick it up from in the UK for a discounted price. Andersons of Warwick. I'd never heard of them before, but it is a watch slash jewellers in Warwick. I had a chat with Peter and he very kindly sold me this Citizen. Well, I don't really know what it is. It's a sort of mishmash of lots of different types of watches, but essentially what Citizen have created is potentially the ultimate beta watch ever made. And in this video, I'm going to review it for you guys. And of course, if you're interested in this watch, I'll just put a link to Anderson's of Warwick in my video description. It's not an affiliate link, it just takes you to their website. But of course, if you enjoy my content, I'd love for you to click that like button and subscribe. Right, let's get into why this could potentially be the world's most ultimate beta. So what makes this Citizen such a formidable beta watch? Well, to understand that, we first need to establish what a beta watch is and what it needs to have to be classified as a beta watch. And coincidentally enough, I've made a list of what I consider to be the top 10 beta watch requirements. Let me quickly run through it. Number one, it should be made of tough and durable materials because it is going to take a bit of a beating. Number two, it should still be comfortable, not too big, bulky or heavy that it's going to distract you whilst doing whatever weird and wonderful activities you guys get up to. Number three, it should be very legible, but still legible in low light conditions. Number four, the movement should be fairly low maintenance, so perhaps not an automatic. Number five, the movement should still be accurate and very, very tough because again, it's likely to take a bit of a beating. Number six, we don't want it to be too pretty because we don't want to care about bashing it around and making it, well, looking a bit all beaten up. Number seven, the bracelet should be easily adjustable because we're likely to be wearing this watch whilst potentially wearing gloves. Number eight, same for the crown. The crown needs to be easily accessible. It doesn't necessarily need to be oversized, but the crown shouldn't be difficult to operate, potentially with gloves on. Number nine, one of the most important, it needs a decent water resistance rating. And the last one, potentially the most important, the price, it shouldn't be too expensive. We don't want to be bashing around a beautiful luxury premium watch. So does this watch qualify for all those 10? Let's head over to the light box and take a look. Starting at the top then, materials. This watch is, well, very durable, I think. It's made of Citizen's proprietary super titanium, which is even more scratch resistant than your standard titanium, which is five times more scratch resistant than stainless steel, apparently. So um, yeah, the titanium is definitely durable. And the crystal, I've tested it. It is sapphire crystal, so... Yeah, definitely made of tough materials. Now, I think it passes number two with flying colours as well, because set up for my roughly average seven and a quarter inch ish wrist, it now weighs 98 grams, so it isn't too heavy. Um, it's not too bulky as well. I'll give you the dimensions in a moment, um, and it is very comfortable, I have to say. Um, the weight, what there is of it, is evenly distributed around my wrist you've got solid links and a milled clasp under there with a sort of on the fly adjustment system which i'll show you in a moment um so yeah definitely very very comfortable and i don't think it's too bulky either 40 millimeters in diameter it's actually quite deceptive because the bezel is smaller than the case that is just over 38 millimeters doesn't look like 40 millimeters what about the thickness 12 millimeters exactly under 46 millimeters in length and 20 millimeter lugs so what about legibility well i'm not so sure it gets much more legible does it um those numbers are rather large aren't they <laughs> and the chapter ring is massive um the hands are contrasting very nicely against the black background. Um, so yeah, it is probably one of the most legible watches you're ever gonna see. But what about low light conditions? Well, yeah, that's not bad either, is it? So I think it ticks the box for number three, legibility. Number four, it needs a low maintenance movement. And I don't think it gets any lower maintenance than Citizen's Eco Drive. It is a solar powered quartz movement. So you're never going to even need to change a battery and well you'd struggle because there's no opening to the case but look it is a monoblock construction number five the movement still needs to be accurate and tough well it's not an automatic so you're not going to need to be too delicate with this movement and with it being a quartz movement it's going to be accurate so you are rarely going to need to interfere with the crown even 
Number six, a beta watch shouldn't be too pretty, and I really don't think this is the prettiest watch. The proportions are out. Um, you've got oversized numerals and markers on the dial. The chapter ring is massive. Um, that bezel also looks out of proportion to the rest of the case. Um, yeah, it's definitely not a pretty watch. Um, I wouldn't mind bashing this one about. I don't think it's an ugly watch. It's just one that I wouldn't mind messing up a little bit, to be perfectly honest. Number seven, the bracelet should be easily adjustable. And I am actually talking about an on-the-fly adjustment system, which this one has. Um, it does have solid end links, solid links and push pins. Um, but when you're wearing this watch during certain vigorous activities, your wrist may swell up. And I have been wearing this watch quite a bit recently. And a few times I have taken full advantage of this on the fly adjustment. Um, you just pull these levers forward and then you can slide this element in and out. So that is going to prove to be very useful, I think. And I think a good beta watch needs to have a crown that is easily accessible. And this one is. There is some fantastic knurling or I don't know what you want to call it. Some machining on that crown which makes it super grippy. It's a fairly fat crown. Sticks out quite a bit. And it is protected partially by those crown guards. But yeah, with a pair of gloves on you're not going to have any issues operating this crown. And as I've already mentioned you should rarely need to touch it anyway. Um, but yeah, if ever you do need to, you're not going to struggle. Now, water resistance, that is potentially the jewel in the crown for this watch because you look at it and you think, well, probably 100 metres, maybe 200 metres at a push. But given the case construction, they've rated this watch as a 300 metre water resistance. Well, it's not a diver, it's just an everyday watch. But 300 metres of water resistance, that's incredible. Total thickness as well, 12 millimetres. Um, yeah, that is impressive. Now, unfortunately, the watch could become unstuck at number 10, which is price. Because, well, traditionally, a beta watch is a watch that you should care very little about. That's the whole purpose of a beta watch. You just wear it for whatever. If it gets bashed around, who cares? Um, but this one retails for £399. And by anyone's standards, that's not exactly throwaway money, is it? Have a chat with Peter. Um, if you're interested in this watch, he may do you a deal. But still, um, I think traditionally beta watches should be sub $100, 100 euros, 100 pounds. Um, there are plenty of beta watches out there that are significantly more affordable than this one. However, I don't think they will necessarily come close to this one when it comes to the specifications that makes this watch what I consider to be, well, one of the world's most ultimate beta watches. And there is something really cool about the way this one looks because it has certain elements that are out of proportion. It makes it look like it is a watch that was specifically designed to be a beta watch. It is the ultimate tool watch to some degree. Um, yeah, it's not the prettiest, but it's going to do a job, isn't it? This one will probably, well, it will be around long after I'm gone, I'm sure. So the question remains, has this watch done enough to be crowned the world's most ultimate beta watch? Um, well, I haven't seen that many beta watches, but those I have seen, um, I don't think have come close to this in terms of um, specifications and durability on paper I think this has to be one of the world's best beta watches but I am curious please do let me know what you think in the comments section if you think there is a better beta watch out there um, let me know and I don't just mean cheaper I mean better specifications more wearable more durable than this citizen if you've got a suggestion let me know in the comments section and yeah, maybe I'll start a series on um, best beaters. Um, but this isn't a bad one to start on, is it? All right, guys, as always, a massive thank you from me to you for tuning in. I do appreciate it. Please take care, guys. Look after yourselves. You'll see me again very, very soon.